I really, really wish leaders, especially leaders of leaders, would stop bitching. (sighs) This is what I mean. I don't know why I'm fired up about it this morning. I'm out for my morning walk, getting my steps in. I hear it all the time. Millennials, uh, Gen X's, Gen Z's. Uh, I'm out. I'm out of, I don't even know labels. I ran into an individual yesterday. He'd worked late. Uh, he was running late for an appointment. And when we chatted, he's like, oh, I'm so sorry I'm late. Five people didn't show up for work today. You know, they're young. Okay, get it. Well, I have been engaging conversations over and over again lately around the different ages, different generations, and all of the problems associated with it. And as senior leaders, leaders of leaders, you need to lead by good example. (sighs) Get out of victimhood, quit complaining, and just deal with it. It is what it is you are not going to change the reality of those you work with and work for. As a leader, you have given up the right, in my humble opinion, to complain and to bitch, especially to other people. You've given up the right and privilege, I suppose, to throw your hands up and say, this is crap, this doesn't make sense, and whatever that that looks like. Really good example, I do a lot of work for um, fire departments, for example, in another business. And our programs are pretty extensive, get really deep, as do my executive programs. And I hear all the time, well, millennials or whatever, they just don't get it. They're different. They're lazy. They're entitled. I also hear young leaders complain about older leaders. And the question I pose to them as firefighters, and I think no matter what, you can probably relate, and if you can't, extrapolate your own experience in the corporate world to this example. And that is, look, fires are burning more quickly in homes, for example. Everyone's like, yes, homes are built closer together. Correct. Uh, The building materials are potentially more combustible. Yeah, depending on the coats in the area, so on and so forth. Is public profile higher? Yes. Does everyone have a cell phone? 100%. Are people a little bit more litigious, more likely to sue? A zillion percent. Okay. We've agreed on that. So what do you do about it? Do you stay in the hall and not respond? Well, no, Daryl. That's stupid. Of course we still respond. That's our job. That's what we do. They don't say it exactly like that, but you kind of get the idea. Guess what? The people on your team are what you do. You are in the people business. That's what you do. And as a result, you need to respond. The responsible thing would be to respond. So making sure that you still continue. Morning. You continue to engage. You don't disengage. You don't throw your hands up and say, ah, this is crap. It just simply is. Part of your leadership environment, the environment in which you operate, yes, you've got the market. Yes, you have the organizational goals. You have targets, KPIs, OKRs, whatever you want to say. You've got all of these things. You've got facilities. But you know what else you have that is the most important part of your job are the people. And people are difficult to lead. They really are. There's a lot of complexity there. Totally get it. So I'm not saying it's easy. I'm not saying it's simple. But I'm saying that it is your job to connect with them. It's your job to recognize what motivates them, what drives them. And that will be different for each person. So it is what it is. It is what it is. Part of being the leader, as I said, is is subjugating your own personal feelings. A lot of times, in some cases, your own values. You don't want to be imparting your own values because you come from a different generation, a different background. So you need to be like a chameleon as a leader. You need to treat others how they want to be treated, not how you want to be treated. So get out of the victimhood. Get out of the bitching and complaining about the team. You are a senior leader. You are a leader of leaders. People are looking to you all the time. Whether you recognize it or not, they are looking to you for how you act, what you say, how you say it how you conduct yourself in public, how you conduct yourself in private, all of those things. 
And unfortunately, it just is what it is. I remember walking into an incident command post, like a headquarters this past summer. I did crisis, crisis leadership. And we're responding to a wildfire, for example. So again, a whole different line of business and, and my background, which I bring to the corporate world. And we're there for wildfires, right? Fires. I remember walking in to the command post one morning and they're saying, Daryl, we got problems. Oh, what's going on? Power lines are down in X location. Oh, okay. I made an immediate assumption that maybe the wildfire had burned them. I was like, oh, I didn't know the, the fire was there. They're like, it wasn't. We don't know what's going on. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. So, of course, what we're going to do is we're going to send somebody or a number of folks to go engage and try to figure out what's going on. We call it situation awareness, size up. And key point, I treated that information, literally I've been conditioned, I've conditioned myself to look at the information to say that's interesting. I don't judge good or bad. Again, extrapolate this to the people business. Next thing you know, we've got two people stranded on a road in similar location, right around in the same area. I'm like, oh, hmm. I wonder why that is. Another report comes in a few minutes later. We have reports of widespread flooding in the town of X. Like, what is going on? Well, as it turns out, during a wildfire, it was in the mountains, there was a freak snowstorm. No word of lie. Just given the elevation and things like that. Nowhere in there did I say, oh man, this sucks. Nowhere in there did myself or any members of the team say, you know what, this is difficult, I'm out. Or, boy, I wish this was better. Man, let's go for a beer and complain about it. No, we're operators. We recognize that not everything is going to be the way we would quote unquote want it. But we have to be flexible. We can't lapse into victimhood. And I know that's a trigger word for a lot of people. We just got to deal. We got to do a size up, figure out what we're dealing with, come up with some solutions and figure it out. Exact same applies to the business people of your job. Millennials, they are who they are. Guess what, folks? Your parents, like my parents, were having the exact same conversation back in the day about us. And I really think that the older we get, the better we think we were. And so I've been hearing it an awful lot. If I was to transfer it over to teaching workshops or programs or online, whatever it is, which I do pretty extensively. Yes. Love it. Yes. Times have changed. Yes. Things I used to say in a classroom, I don't say anymore. You know what I think about that? I don't. I don't think about that at all. I don't actually care. If I want to stay an effective presenter, an effective speaker, facilitator, the reality is some of the things that I said and some examples I used, I don't do anymore. So what do I do about that? Nothing. I adapt and I overcome. If I don't like it, then don't present. Don't facilitate. Don't speak in front of hundreds or thousands of people, Daryl. That doesn't cross my mind. It just simply is. And so there are so many examples. You look at family members getting frustrated and, and challenged by them. They are who they are. So you have a choice to make. It ultimately comes down to choice. You are a victor or a victim around all of this. You either change your own behavior because you're not going to be changing other people. Do you think that your workplaces are suddenly going to be devoid of different generations? No, zero chance of that happening. So what do you do about it? You change your approach, you adapt, you overcome. That is the burden of leadership. You move from a position of why, why is this happening to interesting, curiosity. I did an episode recently when I was traveling in the Middle East presenting some programs around 
curiosity rather than judgment. Asking what and not why. And I think that really applies to this situation here. Instead of getting mad and pissy and complaining, adapt and overcome. Change your approach. That's part of the burden of being a leader, but it's also part of the challenge. It's part of the, the real juice that, that makes leadership so interesting and a challenge. And it's an obstacle in a lot of cases. And so like anything in life, you look at it, you figure out the different angles and you try to, do you go up, do you go down, do you go all around it? That's the beautiful part. That's what I love about leadership. I love the people part of the business actually. Yeah, widgets and numbers and all that stuff too, not to offend any operations folks or you know, accountants out there or anything like that. Not my jam, not my jam at all. In fact, math is hard to me. People are hard, but that's what I love about it. When I'm facilitating a program, I can say one thing to 24 people. 22 get it the way it was presented, but two don't. What do I do? Ah, idiot. You just don't get it. No. Treat people with respect. I give them the, the opportunity to be heard, to be valued. I think about it from an objective perspective and say, that's interesting. Now, how can I change my approach? And I really encourage you as a leader to move away from that victimhood of complaining. And maybe you're not overtly complaining to others, right? Maybe you are generally positive, but that moving from that, that place of, of frustration and, you know, you just don't have that locus of control. And I get it. I totally get it. But approach it with what, not why, as I've said before, and really just make it happen. Try different approaches, whatever that might be. Figure out what's driving that behavior, those behaviors. And ultimately, if you can't change the person, which is extremely difficult to do, if not impossible, then who has to change? You do. And that's a choice that only you can make. But being a leader, you have that opportunity. You're empowered to make that decision. Say, you know what? Is this an issue or is it an issue me? And I'll tell you as a leader, unfortunately, it comes down to you. Your ability to switch your behavior, your approaches, view with curiosity and interest and not judgment. And I promise you that when you make that mindset shift, it's not easy, but when you make that shift, your job will become so much more interesting and easier and people will respond to it because energetically you'll be much more positive. You'll solve problems even better. You're not gonna be going to, to work with a feeling of dread in your stomach because you will have the ability to do what you need to do to adapt. You move from that, that I can't do anything or this is crap or what's the point to, you know what? This is interesting. This is a problem. This is an operational problem. This is a problem in your leadership environment, just like building widgets, just like fighting fires, whatever it is. It's part of your environment and it just is. Make some adjustments, size it up, figure it out, size it up again, make some decisions, take some actions. I talk a lot about decision making and you need to assess, you act and then you adjust, then you assess and then you act and you adjust. Exactly the same in the people business. Hopefully this was helpful, leave a comment. Share. Talk to you soon.